Okay, guys, Mike from Boyer Bows. So, <clears throat> I know you probably can't see me too well, or I'm not even sure if I'm in the picture, but here's the point. Here's where we are with the bow. The bow is ready for some skins. And uh, I know I've been teasing that for a long time. And uh, we're going to have some fun. And you're going to shake your head and go, what is that guy thinking? What is Mike from Boyer Bows? What is wrong with that boy's brain? But trust me, when it's all said and done, you're going to think I'm a mad genius as opposed to just a madman. All right. Well, where we, where we are right now is I've, I'm sizing the bow. You can see it a little, looks a little glossy. I've put a very thin coat of hide glue over the top of the bow just so that when I apply the main uh, amount of glue, I know that there won't be any extra absorption. It probably isn't a big deal because I'm not doing this on top of wood, but I just like to play it a little safe. Uh, the bow is just too nice to take chances. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply what I would call the glue coat to only this limb. Okay, I'm going to hold off on doing that one. So I'm going to go from, I don't know, I'm going to guess where midpoint is. It's just below where I tied the sinew here. And we're going to, we're going to lube her up with some glue. I guess lube is the wrong word, but whatever. And there we go. So let's just make sure we got a nice, there we go, nice coat of glue down the back, everywhere on the back of the bow. Let's make sure that that is fully, fully glued up here. And then I'm going to push and get some of the excess on the sides too, because I want to make sure. Now the skins are probably not going to cover um, all the way from mid handle to where I've tied off the sinew here. And this part of the sinew I'm, I'm going to leave exposed. I'm going to tie that off with some, uh, some uh, artificial sinew or some sort of colorful variation uh, at the end of the process. But for now, I just want the glue to go where the skins are going to go. All right, I want to dunk my finger in some water here, get that glue off. All right, here we go. Here comes the big reveal. Ladies and gentlemen, the skins that we're going to be using right here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get into the picture a little more. Now all you boys out in Texas probably know what I'm talking about. Actually probably a lot of you know what this is. But just in case you don't, this is the skin of a carp. That's right, we're back in the bow with fish skins, guys. Now, why did I decide to do this? I've seen some other people who did this and the end result is unbelievably gorgeous. The pattern's beautiful, it's natural camouflage, everything about it is just spectacular if I can pull it off. I haven't done this before, well, actually I, I have that uh, horse bow that's got carp skins on it, but those were not ones that I harvested, those were ones that were ready to go for me. These are the first ones I ever harvested, skinned, did the whole thing myself. And, uh, well, we'll see. I got a whole plan for this. Anyway, the one thing, you've seen me do the snake skins. The one thing that makes carp a little different is they're incredibly oily. So, not only did I skin, dry, air dry, but I rubbed them down with rubbing alcohol on the inside. This would have been the scale side over here, the inside. I rubbed it down with rubbing alcohol to try to get some of those oils off. The other difference is I'm going to apply glue to the skin before I apply it to the bow. Sort of a two-part process here. I'm not going to overwhelm the skin with glue, but 
but I am going to add some in any case. I'm just going to smooth that on there. Now, from what I understand, there are certain people who don't know what to do with carp. They're fun to catch. Not so much fun to eat because they're a very bony fish. When you do a fillet on these things, there are bones running through the meat that are that cannot be ignored. They are pretty significant bones. I don't know about the flavor of carp per se. Um, I was going to eat the fillets I made off of these things because it looked like they were so meaty, but then I went to cut them into cubes and it was like I was cutting a tree branch. I mean, there's so many bones. And I'm like, boy, I don't know. So if anyone has a video up on how to eat a carp, uh, I would love to see it. All right. Now I'm going to apply the skin. You'll notice there's like half the uh, skin is green and the other half is white. The white's going to be transparent. But I want that natural... I'm going to kind of do a half and half. Just looking at the pattern, the, the skin got a little messed up in the green. Boy, this is so thick, I could probably get two, two deals out of this. But, oh wow, perfect fit. Cool. I didn't, yeah, most people measure what they're doing before they actually apply it. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, you know, not me, of course. And uh, let's get some of the glue off my fingers here. Get some of that glue off the skin so I don't want to do it later. It's another nice thing about high glue is it comes right off with water before it cures. All right, I'm going to pull that down just a skosh. And I like to wrap it. I don't think I'm going to need to pin this. That's a nice pattern. You know what? I'm going to leave it open. I thought about it. I'm looking at it. It's looking like it's bunching up too much. So I'm going to kind of really smooth this down. Then a good idea is to brush your finger and return the pattern to its proper triangles or whatever you want to call these. Boy, that skin was so thick. There were two there were two bow coverings in this one skin. I I kind of goofed on that. But live and learn. Alright. Now let's take a look real quick at what we just did. I'm gonna go over to the bar area for a little better light. And Oh, I don't know, that's a lot of glare. Hold on. Let's see if... Well, I th hopefully you get the idea. I will do the after video soon enough, guys. But for now... I have another limb to do. What I'm going to do is get this one down. A little water on my fingers. Smooth this down. It feels like it's. I'll tell you what, when it comes to putting skins on things, this high glue is really the way to go. It's just like it wants. Uh, there I am wrapping it again. I think I am going to wrap it. It's like the skin wants to just lock on to that high glue. I don't know what it is. And also, I don't. I, I hope it doesn't take as long as Type Bond Three does to dry. It shouldn't. Okay, that feels. A, here's the thing. All of this feels like it's on nice and tight and got a good adherence, but up here, I don't feel it as well. So I'm gonna peel that up. Add some more glue here. This is not the spot where you want it to lift on you. More in this case is better. You have to wait longer for it all to dry, but at least the skin isn't going, oh man, that looks tight. It's a little darker than I thought it would be, but it is cool looking. All right. 
Now I'll tell you something guys, this is not what the carp skins looked like when I put them on last time. The last ones were almost snow white. I think they uh, had a professional fishmonger scale them and it took all the tint off it. Left, left the pattern but man that looks like suit armor. Okay, I'm happy. I'll do the other limb and I'll do a follow-up video on this when uh, the skins are ready to be cut and we'll take a look at how they turned out. Mike from Boyer Bows guys, I hope this was interesting for you. Don't, don't grind your carp up and use them as hog bait or uh, fertilizer until you take the skins off, okay? You got a real resource there, don't lose it. <laughs> anyway, Mike from Boyer Bows, hope you enjoyed.